Greetings everybody. Welcome back to the landscape. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, where am I? I'm somewhere near, I think it's called Watt End Lath Beck. It's, I'm in the Borrowdale Valley, not far away from Surprise View. I've just followed a footpath and I was feeling a bit peckish, like you do. And I managed to find a spot near the watercourse and I was just, I was just sat having something to eat. And I could hear the sound of the watercourse in front of me. And for those of you who followed me for any length of time, you'll know I'm a sucker for moving water. I just love it as a subject. So I'm sat there munching my snack. I've got the noise of the river in my, or the watercourse, in my ears. And of course, as I'm munching away and brains in neutral, I can see these movements of water in front of me. And I was starting to identify which movements of water were contributing to, or mostly contributing to the noise that I could hear in my ears. And I'm going to try and make a video about it, which is going to be interesting because the um, noise of the water is quite loud, which is why I've walked away and now I'm walking back towards it. But I've had to make some compositional choices, but I've also had to make some subject choices with regard to what it is that I point the camera at and how much of it I capture in the frame in order to try and clearly communicate that notion of noise. And there's two main bits of this watercourse where I was sat that sort of have piqued my curiosity. And this might not work, this video might be a complete bust, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. So I'm gonna walk back towards the watercourse. It's now gonna get louder and louder as I do so. I'm just gonna set up, shut up, <laughs> set up the video camera, pointing at my first movement of water and just try and talk about it a little bit. So here's my first movement. I was sat just over here actually, just behind the camera, enjoying my snack. And what, what got me about this one is, well A, I can hear it quite clear. I can certainly hear this ripple here. But what attracted me is, is almost like a Z shape going on here. And that to me helps to put across that notion of movement and noise and energy. And if we just look at the framing for a minute, oh, this is gonna be a bit harder to do in camera. Where are we? We were some, we're something like that, I think. Anyway, it's, it, it, it's about that, approximately that. What I'm trying to do is to accentuate that Z or yeah, it is a Z. There's a straight bit there, there's an angle bit there, and then there's a straight bit there. That, that to me is a Z. It's probably not coming across quite so well on the video camera because the video camera is such a wide angle. But certainly in the stills camera, it definitely looks like a Z. Shutter speed was quite uh, crucial here. I'm having to use a polarizer because you can quite clearly see the glare coming off the water. And I was finding, naturally the camera would want at F, five, six, it was wanting about half a second. Half a second was too much. You can quite clearly see these ripples. Certainly this one here, I, I really wanted that to appear like a ripple as opposed to a complete blur. So I actually had to back the exposure off quite a lot uh, in order to capture these details in the movements. I think it was around about a quarter of a second is what it took. I'm just going to check the stills camera very quickly just to validate that. Yeah, 
quarter of a second at f4 but I did have to back the exposure off by two-thirds of a stop. Now then, the other water movement that caught my eye, let's, let's do this live. So I'm just going to move the tripod that I've got the video camera on. Bear with me whilst I plonk it down on the ground. Yep, that's relatively straightforward. And it was. Yeah, we'll just leave it there. But it was it's this movement here that I can I can see. It sort of starts there. Then you've got a little mini cascade here. There's another cascade behind it. There's this sort of a swirling ripple there. And then you've got a lot of motion here. Now, I haven't framed this one up yet, but I'm reckoning, you know, a normal three by two frame-ish. Whoops. I think it's just to represent it straight. Straight and flat. Or oh, maybe 16 by nine would be better. Uh, where are we? There we go. Something like that, because it's quite a narrow, it's quite a narrow scene in its own right. And I need to be careful because I want this to appear as the start and I want this to appear as the end. I don't want this creeping in. I'm going to have to be careful with uh, the polarizer again to remove some of the glare. Shutter speed. I think shutter speed again is going to be an interesting conversation because the water that's cascading off this rock, I mean, I can see this sort of, you know, dive of water going off the rock. And I think I want to keep that there. Yeah, I think it's an important component in the noise. Also, this uh, movement that's down here, that's another element that's really really communicating the noise so yeah i've done that one over there i think i'm gonna set up the camera and have a crack at this one yeah i like that 16 by 9 definitely worked if anything, actually 16 by 9 was still a bit too fat. I think in software, I might actually end up trimming it back uh, a wee bit more. Point of focus was actually on the large rock that's got leaves on it. I was using an aperture of f4 because I just want the water to be sharp. I don't really, I'm not really interested in everything else. I'm trying to encourage the viewer's eye to look at the water. I want the water to be sharp because that's 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 my story that's my idea that's what i'm trying to say with the picture in reviewing the image in camera that little shoot cascade that's lovely and clear and you can quite clearly see water diving off the rock and i'm contained my story starts here with this ripple and it ends with that little flurry it doesn't become this as well i think to combine the two would be too much that the frame would be so thin and so narrow that I don't think I don't think it would work and in my ears I can hear these two things individually which I think is why I'm encouraged to create two separate pictures as opposed to combining them all together and again I had to use a polarizer to just try and take some of the glare off the water and make it a little bit more attractive. So two really simple scenes, but two really simple scenes that encapsulate my lunch, which is weird really, isn't it? But that's it's kind of one of the things that draws me to photography. And all too often, it's when my brain is in neutral, when I'm switched off, not really thinking about the process of photography and start to notice things. And that's when I noticed these two, which I'm chuffed to bits with. Will they make it into a portfolio? No, probably not. But to me, that doesn't matter. When I look back on these images, you know, I process them and look back on them, I will remember this moment and probably wish 
that I was here rather than wherever I am. But there we go. Right, so I'm going to leave this video here with that little two image thought. I hope it's been interesting and inspiring, guys. If you're ever struggling, if you're somewhere and you're struggling to create an image, I would encourage you to try and find a way of just switching off and relieving the pressure to create an image and just see what naturally occurs to you. And then once you realize what that is, use it to create a picture. Certainly for me, 99 times out of 100, whatever that is, actually says something about the place that I'm in. And that's what drives my photography. And to be perfectly honest, that's what makes it all worthwhile for me. So, hope it's been interesting. Hope it's been useful. Please do like, comment and subscribe. But until we are back out in the landscape again, please everybody stay well, stay safe. And I shall see you in the landscape sometime soon. Take good care. Cheerio for now.